Hi, I'm Alex, the founder of this channel. And if you want to learn Final Cut in just 60 minutes, then you click the right video. I have created this video course specifically for beginners who want to learn the basics of Final Cut in the shortest time possible. I've been working as a self-employed YouTuber and Final Cut video editor for years. During this time I have edited numerous video projects for customers and also for my own YouTube channels. Now I want to share my knowledge with you so you can save a ton of time and start creating your first video. In just 60 minutes you will learn how to create a raw cut of your video footage using the 3 point edit technique, how to work with the timeline, add titles, sounds and effects to make your video more personal. Let's not waste any more time and start with the overview of the interface. Final Cut might look overwhelming when you open it for the first time, but don't worry, it's actually not that difficult to understand. Basically, you can divide the windows into two sections, the top and the bottom. On the left side, we have our library next to our projects and media file. Don't worry, I'll get to libraries and projects in a second. In the middle, we have our viewer, where we can preview our video clips. On the right side, we have our inspector. This is where we edit effects on our video clips. And at the bottom, we have the timeline. Here we arrange our clips to our final video. In this video, I will explain to you what the most important icons in the interface of Final Cut Pro 10 mean and how to use them. So let's start at the very top left, shall we? This button right here is for importing your media. If you click it, you can select the files that you want to add to your media library. This button right here shows the background tasks. For example, if you import media, if you render your video file, if a backup is created, all these processes in the background will be displayed right here. This window here displays the projects as well as your media. If you click this icon right here, you can switch from a list view to a film strip view. This film strip view is better if you want to have a detailed view on your video. This one button right here changes the appearance and filter in your menu. So if you click it, you can change the group. I recommend you to use date imported and descending. Also make sure you have selected the waveforms. This way the most recent imported media will be displayed at the very top. And if you select a clip and change to film strip view, make sure to have waveforms selected, then you will always see when there is audio in your video. If we are in the film strip view and click this button again, you can change the duration. Now we have 30 seconds. If we go to the left, we have two minutes. And if we go to the right, the clip expands. This one right now is two seconds. Now you can easier select certain parts of the clip. But if you're not skimming through the clips, I recommend you to use the list view. This right here is a search tool. Very important if you're looking for a certain clip or a certain effect. Here you can search for and find it. Let's go to the viewer in the middle. This button right here changes the size of the preview clip. The best selection is fit, then it will always be adjusted to the window size. But if you want to have a smaller window, you can change it to 12.5%, 25%, or you can zoom in like 400%. Then you can here search a different area in your video if you move this red rectangle. Now let's go back to fit. You can also resize these windows. If you drag it right here, right there, you can drag this window right here and there. You can also hide them. If you click here, the library will be hidden. If you click here, the timeline will be hidden. And if you click here, the inspector will be hidden. You can also expand the timeline or make it smaller. This button right here is for all your tools and you also see the shortcuts at the end of the line. Here in the middle, you can play or pause your clip you can also press the spacebar to do the same. If you want to go back, hit J, press again to increase the speed. If you press L, it will play back at one time speed. If you press again, it will increase to two time. This number displays the time in your video and it will change with the skimmer. If you press this button, the audio meters will be displayed at the right side. You can also change the width here if you drag it to the left or to the right. If you want to play back a clip in full screen, you can just simply click here, press pause, click here to exit, or you can press shift command F, hit spacebar, press escape. Now let's come to this part. This button right here is for your transitions. This one is for your effects. 
and this one here displays the clips in your timeline. For example, if you choose this one, more video content will be displayed. And if you go to the left, more audio content will be displayed. Most of the time I choose this or this view. Here you can also change the height of the clips. And here you can zoom in or zoom out. You can also zoom in and out if you press Command plus or Command minus. If you want to resize your timeline to your screen size, press Shift Z. Now if you have moved around these windows and want to go back to the default view, that's very simple. Go to Window, Workspaces and click on Default. And that was a short overview of the most important buttons in Final Cut Pro 10. Let's go back to our libraries. A library is a place where all your files of your new video are stored. A library always consists of an event and an event always consists of a project. And the project is the final video file. So let me give you an example. Here I created a new library TSXTurn. These are all my events. If I click on this event 04XTurn, all my projects in this event will be displayed. These are all the projects I have here. 49 A33 review, 50 Galaxy A33 unboxing, etc. And these are all single videos. So if I double click on this project A33 unboxing, the whole project opened in my timeline where I put all the clips of the video in the timeline. So let's say if you want to make a new video about a certain topic, just create a new library. Go to File, New, Library. Now pick a name and save it. If you scroll now in your library section, you will see the library which was created. Now within this library, we have already two events, but these are always automatically created. We don't need them. We create an own new event. So let's click on File, New, Event and give the event a name. For example, and click OK. Now we have our first event and need to create the first project. So again, click on File, New, Project. And now we finally can adjust the settings of the video itself. First of all, we pick a name. Then we click on Video to choose our resolution. I recommend 1080p HD, but you can also use 4K or pick your own resolution if you click on Custom. For example, if you want to create 18 by 9 videos, which are better optimized for mobile, you can just double the second number. So let's pick 2160 by 1080. On rate, you can pick your frames per second. Usually I use 30. But just use the settings that you recorded your footage with. And the rest is all right. We leave it like that. Then you press OK. And now we can see the project, my first YouTube video. If we double click on here, a clean new timeline appears. Now that we have our first project, we need media files. But before we import our media files, let's just have a look at the Final Cut preferences. Basically, you can leave all the settings like that. There's only one setting I would change. If you click on playback, I recommend you to deactivate background rendering. This way, render files won't be stored on your hard drive and those render files can take up huge amount of space. Also, if you click on import, I would leave the files in place, but that's totally up to you if you want to leave your media files in a pre-selected folder or if you want to copy those media files into the library. I, for myself, like to leave the files in place. Also, you never have to back up your Final Cut projects or libraries. Final Cut automatically makes backups from time to time, so you never can lose your files. Now, if you want to import our media files, let's go to the top left and click on the arrow. Then this huge window appears. Now, if we go to the left side, we see our devices and our hard drives, and then click us through our files until we find our media. And this was the one I was looking for, 159S21. Now, in this directory, I recommend you to always make folders for your audio and your video files. So let's look at this audio folder. Here are all my audio files. 
And if I go to a video, here are all my video files. Now I just hold down the command key and select audio and video. Then on the right side, we can quickly go through our settings, but these are the ones we just set. So I just leave it like that and click import selected. And here below our project, we see our imported files. This one here is our audio file and these are the two video files. Now let's check out in the next chapter how we can synchronize our audio and video. That was the first chapter of my Final Cut video course. In the next chapters, we will start with a three-point edit and create our first raw cut. If you want to see that, just click the link in the description. You will be guided to my course homepage. In more than eight chapters, you will learn how to edit videos, add titles, effects and transitions to create your first video. Click the link in the description and I see you soon.